What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations of what players to sign for a specific team in career mode but before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or those of you out there who may just be stuck for ideas ideas on what players you could buy for a certain team in career mode. Now today's team we're going to look at is Real Madrid of Spain. So the Giants Real Madrid, one of the biggest sides in the world. The reason I really wanted to do this team is because my last European side was a major European side as well in Bayern Munich. So I kind of want to do a big European side once again and try and better the side like I felt I was able to do with Bayern Munich. Because it's a different kind of challenge as opposed to just using a side which there are loads of targets for. With these sort of bigger sides, I don't really want to make arbitrary signings. I want to make signings that really are going to benefit the side and it could be a little bit more of a difficult challenge as opposed to taking a side which has a smaller budget but lots more improvement needing. But uh, still, for Real Madrid, uh, as you can see, they're the, the board have given you three objectives. They are to win the cup, to win the league and to win the Champions League. That's hardly a surprise, is it? The board wants you to do all three of those objectives. Last season, Real Madrid didn't do any of those though. They finished uh, runners-up in the league. They finished in a round of 16 in the Copa del Rey and they also finished in the semi-finals in the Champions League before being beaten by Juventus who, of course, were beaten by Real Madrid's uh, rivals Barcelona in the final by three goals to one. So with Real Madrid, the board wants you to do all three of those objectives with that really good squad you saw there and a £72 million budget. So should you be able to do that? Absolutely yes. This side is a really good one. It's one of the best sides in FIFA. It's a fantastic squad full of really, really good players. Some good young talent as well. Uh, as for contracts, I will say right now, only two I'd recommend giving new deals to. Uh, those are the left midfielder there and also Mayoral. I'd let the other ones go. But uh, still, Real Madrid side is really really good and for 72 million pounds on your budget with a really good squad already you should be able to meet all three of those objectives in the first season uh, the first thing I would do around you though is recall this guy from his loan spell Fabio Contral right now is on loan at Monaco he's not going to grow any ratings whilst on loan there at the French side because he's 27 years old he's 80 overall he's not going to get any more ratings added on when he comes back from loan so just recall Contral get him back in your squad and I'll discuss what to do with him uh, in just a moment's time but so the transfer targets with Real Madrid, well I did say at the start of the episode, as I always do, that the uh, the signings aren't designed to be realistic, but this is probably a realistic signing because David De Gea was wanted by Real Madrid over the summer and it looked for all the world he was going to go to the Bernabeu as well. Uh, and then of course there was that paperwork drama that uh, sort of prevented his move from uh, going through. But David De Gea would be my number one target for Real Madrid. You saw the side that Real Madrid have. It's absolutely fantastic. They've brought in Kika Casilla for this year, whilst also letting one of their legends, Ika Casillas, go to Porto. But they still want a new goalkeeper, uh, you know, one of world-class stature. And David De Gea is 24 years old. He's 86 overall in the game. We can get him for around £35 million. That's the fee I submitted, and that's the field that's accepted. And David De Gea right there, that was a really quick transfer. But De Gea is my number one target for Real Madrid, because as you saw the side a minute ago, it's a really awesome side. But you have to admit that 81 overall for Kaylon Navas, not a bad goalkeeper at all. Very good uh, goalkeeper. And of course, Kiko Garcia, a new signing as well. Neither of those goalkeepers are bad in any way. But you would want a world-class goalkeeper. And De Gea is younger than both of those goalkeepers. He starts at 86 overall. And at 24 years old, he has the potential to hit 89 overall. With training and good form as well, he could potentially get into the 90s. He's Spanish. Again, he is technically a bit of a realistic transfer target. In my opinion, De Gea is the number one target for Real Madrid. And if you are doing a Real Madrid uh, career mode, you'll probably notice it by the squad of £72 million. Your first thought is probably, let's get a new goalkeeper in. David De Gea, in my opinion, is just the ideal choice. Uh, still, following that, you saw as well, uh, we put in a bit for Morata too. And also, Contral and Casemiro get sold to Leon and Watford, respectively. Casemiro's potential is 81, despite being quite young. So you're probably not going to use him much when uh, you consider the fact that Real Madrid have just bought Kovacic in real life as well. And uh, as for Contral, uh, it cost about a million pounds to record it from his loan spell, but then to sell him for around 10 million pounds is, in my opinion, really good business because we'll discuss again in just a moment's time uh, in more depth why Contral getting him back from his loan spell was ideal. But uh, either way, Contral and Casemiro, I'd sell both of those players right there and uh, also to try and sell on Kaylor Navas as well. Now you brought in David De Gea as you won't need three 80 plus rated goalkeepers. But as for Alvaro Morata as well, he would be another signing I'd recommend for Real Madrid. Now Morata, of course, was a former Real Madrid 
Madrid player. And I do believe that Real Madrid have got a buyback clause with Morata. I'm not entirely sure whether that's true or not, so don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. But with Morata, he's an awesome, awesome young striker. They let him go to Juventus. He's 81 overall in the game, and his potential is 88. And with uh, Real Madrid, your main out-and-out -out striker, Karim Benzema, is 86 overall, I do believe, and he's uh, in his uh, mid to late 20s. You would want a backup striker because your second and only other backup striker is Mayoral. The out and out striker that is, is Mayoral. So you would want a backup striker. And in my opinion, you see Navas get sold for 12 million pounds. Really good deal, in my opinion, uh, considering that you just bought De Gea. That covers some of that transfer fee. With Morata, if we can get it for around 21 million pounds, which is what we do, that's a really, really decent deal because what you need to remember with Karim Benzema is he's not going to grow many ratings at all uh, unless he gets training or is in really good form. So if you can buy a backup striker that's on the bench in the first couple of seasons, you'll know that this guy, Morata, could outgrow Benzema's current rating right now and become your number nine for many years to come. Of course, with Real Madrid, he was a former Real Madrid player, so... You know, it kind of makes sense to buy back a player that they had before who they obviously knew about his potential. And um, again, I would say that they probably do have a buyback clause. I'm not sure that is true or not. I'm pretty sure it is, though. With Morata coming back into Real Madrid and coming back to the Bernabeu, he'd sit on the bench in the first season whilst they're playing with one striker at the moment. But in two or three years, he would be the main number nine for Real Madrid once Benzema gets a little bit older and you'll want to shift him on. Morata is the ideal long term replacement for Karim Benzema and try and get him back to the Bernabeu if you can. And with ADA potential and, of course, with good form and good game time, and of course uh, the player training feature he could outgrow 88 and possibly get into the 90s I'd also recommend selling on Arba Loa uh, I know Arba Loa of course has uh, spent many years at Real Madrid but as a 78 overall right back I believe he actually starts off with 79 and goes down in the first couple of months he's 32 years old he's out of contract in the first season in my opinion I'd just get rid of Arba Loa as soon as possible because he's a decent squad player but he's on about 70 grand a week and you don't really need him so if he's going to be leaving the club in January or in the summer anyways I wouldn't recommend giving him a new deal and he's going to decrease in stats right from the first month just get a couple million for him if you can we got 3.7 million and in my opinion that's just a fair deal for a player who you're not going to use that much it's coming towards the end of his career and it's just a bit of a waste of wages really uh, other than being a good squad player he's not really going to do much for you still I'd also recommend trying to sign William Carvalho as well from Sporting we got him for 19 million pounds now you may be surprised about this deal uh, when you consider the fact that uh, Roundjet has just bought Kobe Kitchen in real life a very talented young midfielder but I'd still recommend doing it anyway because Carvalho has potential to hit 87 in the future and he's a really 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 good defensive midfielder in the game one of the best you can buy and if you've got the money I think he's probably just worth doing it anyway so Carvalho for around 19 million pounds is a really good deal when you consider the fact he could hit 87 and plus that in the future too uh, and also Jose Gaia as well uh, with Valencia the left back is Spanish he's 20 years old he's 80 overall and he has the potential to hit 87 in the game game as well and of course again I will reiterate with player training and good form as well he could exceed that we get him for around 15 million pounds and Jose Gaia as a left back when you sold Contral for around 10 million pounds you may be surprised about this you know why you would buy a backup left back while uh, after selling on Contral for more money than Contral when they are the same overall 14 million pounds sorry not 15 million pounds when they're the same overall but Jose Gaia is seven years younger than Fabio Contral and of course he has the potential to hit 87 in the game as well and Marcelo is 27 years old and the reason just like with um, Morata is because this guy won't go into the first 11 in the first season but he'll be on the bench and in the resis and in years to come he will overtake that left back slot from Marcelo so in my opinion Jose Gaia would be a really really good option to bring in at left back after you sold Fabio Contral after bringing him back from his loan spell at Monaco uh, still my final recommendation for a signing with Real Madrid would be this guy right here, Briel Donald Imbolo, the striker from Basel. Now, I'm sure you've heard about this guy. He's one of the hottest prospects you can buy in career mode for the striker role. He starts off with 76 overall, but has the potential to grow 12 ratings and possibly exceed that and get to 88 potential, which is what he starts with in terms of the potential. But of course, again, you can outgrow that with training and good form as well. You can get him for around £8 million. And again, I did mention with the Real Madrid team, in the striker role, they've got Karim Benzema, but the second choice striker is 
is um, is uh, is Mayoral, and that's the only other out and out striker they have in their first team right now at Real Madrid. So in my eyes, it's good to get cover in the striker role. I'll always say this: it's good to have at least three or four strikers that you really feel you can rely on, and at a bare minimum two, in my opinion, if you're playing one uh, one up top. But either way, uh, in bowling, get him for around eight million pounds. He's got 88 potential. Starts over 76 overall. He'll be in the resis in the first season. He probably won't even get on the bench. But he's it's all about the future with Real Madrid. You know, I said this. It's all about the future of Real Madrid. It's buying in good young talent that you know can replace those experienced players in the future. So with Real Madrid, you spend 97 million pounds on just five players. And when you're spending almost 100 million pounds on just five players, you're probably thinking, well, are they going to be worth the money? Well, when you look at their potential, David De Gea, 89, Morata, 88, Mbolo, 88, Carvalho, 87, and Jose Gaia, 87. Adding to the young talent they have here at Real Madrid anyway, and also the uh, in addition to the experienced players right here as well that are good too, this, in my opinion, is the best strategy for a long career mode with Real Madrid. Now, I know that with a lot of people, they might just manage Real Madrid for one season and just want to buy, you know, two of the best players in the world, for example. But I would say that if you're doing a long career with Real Madrid and you want to dominate Spain and also European football as well, you want to look at the future with Real Madrid. They've got some good young talent anyway, but there's no harm in adding to that in the key areas like for striker role, for example, uh, you know, trying to bring, bring in players that are good enough to replace Benzema in the future, like Morata, like Mbolo, left back area, Jose Gar to take over from uh, Marcelo, goalkeeper, of course, David Hay will be your number one and has potential to possibly get into the 90s as well. Um, but either way, it's it's a really, really good side around you'd have, but you could still do some improving in that in those areas uh, by bringing in young talent. But uh, for Real Madrid, the objectives were to, of course, win all three trophies. I wasn't able to do that in the season of Real Madrid. Of course, we did simulate to the end there. You saw what happened. Real Madrid won the league. They also won the Champions League, so good to win a double. But in the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey, were knocked out by Barcelona. So obviously, this season, due to the uh, the suspension of uh, Sherry Chev, uh, fielding an in ineligible player, Real Madrid have been uh, knocked out of the Copa del Rey, or I should say, booted out of the Copa del Rey. But either way, uh, only reason the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey was a bit of a shame for me. Didn't want to see that. But either way, did win the league, did win the Champions League, and you can see the squad here after the first season. It does look really, really good. There are good, healthy attribute changes for quite a few good young players. And I would say this Real Madrid side is more than capable of being a dominant one in Spain and also in European football in years to come. It's a good squad. You've added to it with some good young talent. You're spending £97 million. It's a lot of money. But you'll know that in years to come, this will be the best side in the world without question because of the potential of those five players you're buying in addition to the players you already have. But either way, those are the players I would buy for a Real Madrid career mode. That is how I would manage Real Madrid. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to leave me a comment and tell me how you would manage Real Madrid in the comment section down below. And also let me know what team you want me to do for my next Who to Sign For. But thank you for watching the video regardless though. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you haven't enjoyed today's episode of Who to Sign For, then please do leave a like. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Tell me how you would manage Real Madrid and also what side you want me to do next. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.